Q-Code and Wood Elf present The Edge of Sleep. Starring Mark Fishbach. Created by Jake Emanuel and Willie Block. around 4 a.m. Linda Russo was a nurse, working the night shift at the Santa Mira ER. It had been a quiet night, especially for a holiday, before everything went to hell. Linda didn't like the quiet nights. It was too much time to sit and think. She preferred a crisis where her skills could be put to use. But what Linda loved most about the ER was that in a moment the night could turn. The job was unpredictable, and you could never truly prepare for what was going to happen. Hey, Linda. Hey, Britt. How you doing? I'm tired. I bet. Between tests, classes, and all these late shifts, I feel like I might never sleep again. Well, you still look good, so go to hell. <laughs> Thanks. You finishing up? Yeah, I'm pulling a 10-hour. I've got one hour to go. You're a monster, girl. <sighs> Final stretch. I slept like shit last night. I'm looking forward to my 9 a.m. nap. Mm. Well, room four is empty. It's ready when you need it. Seems quiet. Not so busy tonight, huh? No. In room five, we have a senior with bacterial pneumonia. We have her on a bronchodilator and some antibiotics. In room three, we have a gentleman in his 50s who came in complaining of chest pains, but it looks like he's just got a nasty case of heartburn. Hmm, let me guess. Did the dumbass chug beer and eat hot dogs all day? Happy 4th of July. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say, it looks like a pretty light night for a holiday, thank God. Oh, I almost forgot. <laughs> I have a real treat for you. What? <laughs> Come with me. Wait, where are we going? Room one. Read his chart. Okay, let's see here. Patient is a 16-year-old male. He is being treated for third-degree burns on his scrotum and rectum. What the hell is this? Yes. Wait, do I even want to know? The patient was inebriated at a 4th of July party, and to use his words, he lit a rocket out of his asshole. No. <laughs> his ass hair caught on fire. So he jumped in a pool. Oh, my God. <laughs> when I cleaned the wound, it smelled like that time you burnt your hair. Ew! Fuck you. <laughs> oh, and get this. The first question he asked me was, how long would he have to wait before he could jerk off? What did you say? Four to six weeks. <gasps> you are cruel. But I saved his mom a couple of trips to the washing machine to clean his sheets. These old machines. It probably got unplugged from the wall. Mm. Hi, John. It's Nurse Linda. This is Nurse Brittany. How are you feeling? John? Can you hear me? John? John? I'm not getting a response. Can we get some help in here, please? He's not breathing. I can't find a pulse. I've been getting compressions. We have a code blue in room one. What's going on? We have a 16-year-old male undergoing cardiac arrest. Help me lift him. Attaching uh -huh. pads. Start defibrillation at 120 joules. Everybody clear? Clear. clear. Shock delivered. No response. Resume compressions. Let's get an ABG and a one milligram epinephrine push. Epi delivered. Can someone please tell me what happened? Patient came in to be treated for minor burns. He has no allergies, no medications. Any sign of toxicity? His blood alcohol levels are at 0.05%. His last vital signs were normal. Start an infusion of 500 milligrams of saline. Stopping IV and infusing with saline. Linda, can you tell me why a healthy 16-year-old is undergoing cardiac arrest? I don't know, doctor. Let's up defibrillation to 150 joules. Everybody clear. 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 Shock delivered. No response. 
Dr. Gordon, Dr. Gordon, we have a code blue in rooms three, six, five, and two. What? Are you sure? This is the machines or some sort of power outage? I, I don't know, sir, but all the electrocardiograms have flatlined. I checked Mrs. Bowers in room five, and she has no pulse and isn't breathing. Who are the other doctors on call? Just you and Dr. Lagarde. Fucking hell. Doctor, what is going on? I don't know. But what we're going to do is transfer half the patients in here and the other half into room two with Dr. Ligari. Jorge, continue compressions and CPR. The rest of you, get it done. Now, 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 let's go! Doctor, can I have a second? Now is not a great time, Linda. We need to evacuate the staff immediately. What? Seven patients are all dying simultaneously. The only explanation is a gas leak or some sort of chemical agent. What about the patients? This boy is dead, Doctor. Do you want to risk the staff for six more flatliners? Linda, right now I just need you to shut up and fall in line. Hey! Where are you going? Linda! Linda! Attention! All staff members, evacuate the building immediately. This is not a drill. Please leave your stations and exit the building. 6.25 a.m. Randy was dead. His body lay on the curb of the hospital sidewalk. The nurse who had helped me offered me a cigarette. I wasn't a smoker, but at the moment it seemed like the right thing to do. Thanks. <coughs> do you know what time you found your friend like this? I'm not exactly sure. Was it after 4 a.m.? Yeah. Um, if I had to guess, I got to this place around 5.30. How many miles is it from here? Uh, it's just down the road. Maybe two or three miles. Wait here. I stood there waiting as she walked to the staff who were gathered outside the ER. When she spoke to them, one of the doctors seemed angry. He snapped at her, and she snapped back. I couldn't hear what they were saying, but I could see their faces. Every one of them looked afraid. She grabbed a duffel bag by the ER door and walked over to me. Did I get your name? I'm Dave. Nice to meet you, Dave. I'm Linda. I'm gonna need a favor. Can you give me a ride into town? Well, I... The six o'clock bus never showed and my phone's not working. I can't get a ride. I can pay you. I've got... $42. Uh, no, that's okay. I can give you a lift. Thanks. What about my friend? You can leave him here. On the ground? I'm sorry. It's either that or bringing him in the car with us. Let's go. Are you sure your colleagues don't need an extra hand? They're not my colleagues. I don't work here anymore. Mind if I turn on the radio? Go ahead. What the f well, that's weird. I'm so sorry. No, that's okay. Is it alright if I scream? What? I'd like to scream. Yeah, sure. really fucking good. Maybe I should give it a try. It helps. <sighs> I'm sorry about your friend. Thanks. We weren't really close. He was more of a friend of a friend. If any consolation, there's a 70% increase of ER visits during the holidays. There's an increase of suicides, DUIs, even nice wounds. Jesus. Is that supposed to cheer me up? Yes. Misery enjoys company. You're not the only one having a fucked up 4th of July. Well, I was supposed to meet with my ex-girlfriend, so my night wasn't going to be good from the start. Oof, it sounds worse than any trip to the ER. <laughs> you ever think about dating a nurse? No. You should think about it. They make good wives. 
especially the ones that work in the ER. Why is that? Well, yesterday we had an 11-year-old girl who had her throat ripped out by a pit bull. The day before that, we had a 40-year-old dad with cerebral hemorrhaging after his son accidentally hit him with a baseball bat. And the day before that, I can't even remember. Because that's the kind of shit an ER nurse deals with every day. And why exactly does that make them good wives? Gives them perspective. They don't sweat the little things. They know they're gonna end up on that gurney one day, dying in misery. So, they try to enjoy life while they can. Well, there are other people that deal with death, cops and soldiers. Do they make good husbands? It's not the same. They do the killing. We do the fixing. The first thought I had was that I liked this girl. She was weird as hell, even weirder than I was. She's one of those people who has no idea how fucking crazy they sound. Or maybe she just didn't care. Either way, I liked it. I could never be a nurse. Why is that? I don't like blood. It gives me nightmares. Hmm, the blood's not so bad. The worst part is the fear in people's eyes. The look of terror when they know they're going to die. Yeah, that sounds pretty fucking bad. Stop the car. Huh? Stop the car. Okay. No, don't pull over, just stop. In the middle of the road? Yes, right fucking here. Oh okay. We're stopped. Hey, uh, I don't know if it's a good idea to just stand in the middle of the road. There's nobody here. What? Where are the cars? The joggers, the people walking their dogs, where the fuck are they? I don't know. It's still early. I guess everyone's asleep. Come stand in the road with me until someone drives by. We stood in the center of Camden Avenue, one of the busiest streets in town. As I looked around, I realized all the stores were closed. Nick's Bistro, the pharmacy, the paper stand on the corner of the street. A sick feeling of panic started to burn in my chest. Where was everyone? I barely registered what was happening as Linda pulled the pistol out of her duffel and raised it to the sky. What the fuck? The shot echoed down the street. Dozens of people should have appeared. But nobody came. Get undressed. What? She didn't ask me again. Linda pulled off her clothes and stripped to her underwear in the middle of the street. She reached into the duffel and threw me a pack of clothes. Put it on! We're standing in the middle of a fucking biohazard zone. Through the plastic packaging, I saw a gas mask and a rubber jumper. It was a hazmat suit. side of the street. Any survivors? No. Were all the victims lying in their beds? Most of them. A few were on their couches. How about your side? Same thing. Jesus Christ. What's going on? I don't know. But we are in the middle of a fucking pandemic. Is it a virus? Possibly. But what virus has no symptoms and kills all of its victims simultaneously? What about a chemical attack? That'd kill everyone all at once. Yes, but again, no side effects. All nerve agents cause foaming from the mouth, the constriction of pupils. There'd also be a sign of a struggle. Chemical weapons don't just kill you instantly. Radiation? Small dose would kill you slowly. If it were a larger dose, their skin would be burnt. There'd be rashes and boils. These bodies are pristine. How 
come we're not affected? That's a million dollar question. You've reached the Los Angeles County Center for Disease Control. All of our lines are currently busy. Please leave your name, your number, and a brief message, and we will return your call as soon as possible. Thank you for calling the California Department of Public Health. Our office is currently closed. Hello. If this is a medical FBI emergency, please hang up please and note call that this call may be recorded. If you're calling about a background check to report you have criminal reached activity, the U.S. Tip, Coast Guard you base you located in You've San Pedro, California. You've reached the California National Guard voice Sorry, system. we can't come to the phone right now. All lines Please leave busy. your name, your number, and a brief message. Hey, it's Katie. Leave a message. Hey, it's me. Um, uh, I'm not exactly sure what to say. Uh, if you get this message, please call me back. I'm, uh, I'm about to head for L.A. I should be on the road for the next three hours. <clears throat> I'm driving to the Center for Disease Control, and, um... <clears throat> um <clears throat> I guess I just wanted to say that if something happened between us, if I did anything to you, I'm sorry. I love you. That's it. Call me. Hey. Ready to go? Yeah. I think we can take these masks off. Well, you sure it's safe? Well, they don't have an atmospheric seal, so if this is an airborne agent, we're fucked anyway. Fair enough. You okay to drive? Yeah, well, I'm tired, but I'll be fine. Do you mind if I get some sleep? I know I should keep you company, but I would be very unpleasant. I've been up for like 28 hours. Yeah, no worries. I'll wake you when we get to LA. Thanks. Glad I didn't forget these babies. Is that Ziafrin? Yep. That's well, pretty easy to recognize, those little blue pills. You have a prescription? In the past, I've dabbled with uh, Respitor, Ziafrin, uh, Simbitrol, Zimidine. Are you an insomniac? Uh, parasomniac with REM sleep behavior disorder. Oh, shit. That's a rare one. It's pretty nasty. Yeah. I guess I'm lucky that way. Well... I'm gonna close my eyes now, give it a minute, let these little elephant tranquilizers kick in. most of the episodes from when I was younger. But this one memory shot into my brain like a bullet, crashing into my mind with perfect recall. Okay, Davey. A is for... Apple. Very good. And B is for... Banana. That's right. And C is for... Cat. Very good. And what does the cat say? Meow. <laughs> and D is for dog. And the dog says ruff, ruff. And E is for Davy. E is for Come on. Come on, Dave. Say it. Dave. Say it! Say it! E is for elephants! Ah! It's okay, Davy. Shh. What is it this time? Elephants. 
What? Elephants, John. It's from that goddamn book you read him. He dreamt that I turned into an elephant. Hey, don't you pin this on me. It's just a spelling book. Letters and pictures. That's Shh. all. That book is too much for him. You can just read him whatever you want. Think about what you're doing. I'm sorry. I want to teach my kid how to read. Hell, I've already thrown out all my vinyl in every book in the house that doesn't have a happy cover. Put my grandmother's Russian dolls in the basement, the horse painting, sterilized the whole fucking house so my son can get one good night's sleep. Oh, and you think shouting's gonna help? Nothing can help us. John. You know it's true. It's been five years, Trace. We haven't had a full night's sleep since the day he was born. You realize what this has done to my career? Stop it. Our marriage? Please. Remember we used to have lives? Well, if you don't like it, then leave. Ugh, I'm sorry. I, I don't want to fight. I just don't know what to do. It's okay, baby. Sorry, Mama. It's okay, sweetie. It's not your fault. We love you, Davy. I'm sorry it gets late. Dave. Dave. Dave! <sighs> what the fuck, man? You're swerving. Are you sure you're okay? You have to throw up the pills. Dave! You have to throw up the pills. What? Now, before it's too late. What are you doing? Get out of the car. Hey, hey, don't fucking touch me. You have to throw them up. Well, now. Why? Just trust me, if you don't, I think something bad will happen, okay? Do it. Okay. Now! Okay. <laughs> Linda stared at the pills. Neither of us said anything. We just stood there on the side of the highway, lost in thought. After a minute, she looked at me with a sense of urgency. I gotta call the hospital. Hello? Dr. Gordon? What do you want, Linda? Are you still at the ER? Yes. I need to speak to Brittany. She's on break. Yes, I know. Room four. Can you get her for me? Jesus, Linda, I don't have time I to... know, I know, but please, could you just check on her? taking a nap. What? That's when she died. This thing is triggered by sleep. We have to stay awake. The Edge of Sleep stars Mark Fishbach as Dave, Michael Yama as the Whale, Carly Spurk as Brittany, Kara Santana as Linda, Alex Esso as Katie, Chris Mulkey as Dr. Gordon, Marsha Cross as Tracy, Rob Morrow as John, and Sander Argerbright as young Dave, with additional performances by Jason Nahum, Matthew Letkowitz, Julia Henning, Kristen Tepper, and Jake Emanuel. Written by Jake Emanuel and Willie Block. Directed by Jake Emanuel. Produced by Q Code, Daylight Media, and Mark Fishbach. Recorded, mixed, and mastered by Salt Audio. Original music and score by Jamie Sheffman and Noah Gersh for Salt Audio. Sound design by Maria Mora and Juan David Chaparro Perez for Audio for Media. Edited by Zach Jurich. Associate Producer, Tess Ryan. Script Supervisor, Sam Beasley. Production Support provided by James Gelberg. Casting by Chelsea Block and Marisol Roncalli at Atomic Honey. 
Art by Matt Taylor and Aaron Salazar. Special thanks to Jeff Roy, Mark Holden, Kirsty Jan Verdal, and Celeste Armstrong. The Edge of Sleep is a Q Code production. If you enjoy the show, subscribe to The Edge of Sleep on Apple Podcasts or wherever you find your favorite audio dramas. You can also visit our merch store at qcodemedia.com slash the edge of sleep.